Hello everybody, this is Lara at PureElliotWave.com. Before I get into today's analysis, I need to let you know that I'm closing my list to new requests for new analysis. My list is really long, and just for the sake of my own sanity, I need to start to really work through it and get it down before I start to take on new requests. So if anyone wants to request that I analyse a new market, um, I'm not adding any more to the list at the moment, and I will let you know when I open up the list again. Just give me... A couple of weeks or so to start to get that list to a manageable level that's not weighing heavily on me. Thanks for your understanding. I am going to update my Elliott Wave count and technical analysis for Avalanche, AVAX USD. My last analysis was done in February and I was looking for the end of primary two. Let's see if there's a complete Elliott Wave structure down to this low. I know it doesn't look like it because of the semi-log scale, no, I wouldn't want to do that, no, I want to see this here. I know it doesn't look like it because of the semi-log scale, but yeah, W and Y really close to equal in length, W 92.27, Y 89.67. Uh, if we view this on an arithmetic scale, it'll be a little bit more obvious. But we should be viewing all these cryptocurrency charts on semi-log or log scales. And the only reason I'm using semi-log and not log is that is my option. I have semi-log or not semi-log. That's it. That Y doesn't look so great as a zigzag. So let's have a look at that at the daily chart level. Now I think I want to have X over here. And then let's pull Y down to the low. Is this the low? Yeah. And let's have a look. I've already had a look because I went through my technical charts. That looks like an impulse. That doesn't look like a zigzag. They can look really similar. But that doesn't look so good as a zigzag. Hmm. My technical analysis chart strongly suggests there's a low in place. I'm just trying to see if this could be a single zigzag with A, some kind of B and C. But I can't see B as a triangle. I don't want to try now. It's, I wouldn't have wouldn't want to label it as a double zigzag. Mm, no, I want to see W X Y. This has a good fit. But is Y going to subdivide as a zigzag? Okay, I don't want to see. You can't. I suppose I could see it as A B and then an extended C wave with one, two, three, four, five. Well, probably should do two wave counts. Oh, I don't want to spend that much time on it. Oh, goodness. Let's see if Y will subdivide as a zigzag. Sorry about all that mucking around. Oh, no, no, this is an impulse. I don't like the look of that at all. I mean, it could be, but... Mm, no. Oh, that's probably a little bit better, actually. Yeah, and now C will be a nice impulse. Is A going to have a nice... Okay, yeah, that's okay. The end of the third wave. Mm-hmm. That looks good. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, I'm happy with that. A lot happier with that than I am with the idea of minor A being over here. This movement, this vertical downward movement, that looks like a fifth wave to end a third wave impulse one degree higher. And that's what I went over on that presentation I did on Wednesday this week for FX Traders Edge. The extended fifth waves, and it works in both directions. Here's an extended fifth wave. Common in commodities and cryptocurrencies, especially common in cryptocurrencies, and most prevalent as a fifth wave to end a third wave one degree higher. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that wave count. I think that looks okay. I'm going to do really quickly, I'm going to do an alternate and consider the possibility that primary two could be over as a single zigzag. So let's delete all the double zigzag labeling. Yep, get rid of that. And let's see if it will fit as a single zigzag. Yeah, see, I can't see A over there because it doesn't subdivide well at all as a five. So I'd have to see A over here, B over here. Uh, where's the low? 77.021, 75, yeah. So A, a five wave impulse. No, I want to see one over here. So is C going to subdivide well as an impulse? Yep, it is. Now five looks like a really good looking impulse. Beautiful. Three. 
Yep, beautiful. Okay, it's going to fit either way as a zigzag, a, sorry, a double zigzag or a single zigzag. But here, well, let's see. Is there a Fibonacci ratio between A and C? They're not close to equal in length. C looks a lot longer, but again, that's partly the scale. Oh my goodness, that is such a close Fibonacci ratio. C is so close to 1.618 the length of A. I think this is the correct wave count. So 1.618 the length of A would be 113.96 and C is 113.57. That is so close. That's really awesome when you see Fibonacci ratios like that. In your Elliott wave count, it tells you the Elliott wave count has a higher probability of being correct. This is a really beautiful impulse. Avalanche is forming really nice Elliott wave structures. Okay, let's take a look at how, if this is over and it's deeper than the Fibonacci, sorry, than the logarithmic function of the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio. What I mean by logarithmic function is if I view this on an arithmetic scale, the correctly, the Fibonacci ratio of primary 1, 6.618, is 61.627735. And if you apply a logarithmic function to that, it's 26.713. That is not mathematically, can't state that that's the Fibonacci ratio of primary 1. It's not. It's the logarithmic function of the Fibonacci ratio. I know that just sounds a little bit pedantic, but, you know, maths is, maths is accurate. It is or it isn't. One and one equals two, not anything you like it to be. That's why I like it. Okay, let's see if we can see a rising wedge, a leading diagonal for minor wave one. This fits as a leading diagonal for Bitcoin. Is it going to fit as a leading diagonal for Avalanche? I'm looking at the wavelengths now. Three is longer than one, five is longer than three, but four is longer than two, so the wavelengths fit, but are the trend lines going to, they converge. Okay, and the other thing is two, if it's over there, it's got a hugely truncated C wave. No, you'd have to see it over here. This still works. If we view this on an arithmetic scale, the trend lines are going to diverge. Okay, that's how I'd label that. And each subwave is a zigzag within a leading diagonal. Subwaves two and four may only subdivide as zigzags. Subwaves one, three, and five are most commonly zigzags. They may also appear to be impulses. So that's going to be my wave count, and I'm going to leave it on an arithmetic scale so that the trend lines look right. I'm slightly concerned about the overshoot of the two, four trend line. For Elliott Wave diagonals, the trend lines should be fairly strictly adhered to. This one isn't giving me slight cause for concern, but I, I am having a real hard time seeing that movement as anything else. Now I want to see the Fibonacci retracement of minor wave 1, and I'd expect minor 2 to be deeper than the 0.618 ratio, that's arithmetic. We'll have a look and see what the logarithmic function of that would be as well. So a bare minimum expectation for more downward movement would be 20.29. Let's apply a log function to that. 18.72, probably a little bit more likely. Okay, this is viewed on a semi-log scale. So this is the logarithmic function of the Fibonacci retracements. I'd expect minor 2 to reach at least... 18.725063. Second wave corrections following leading diagonals and first wave positions are normally very deep, but minor 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 13.79519. That rule is absolute, and so that invalidation point is black and white. A new low by any amount at any time frame will invalidate this wave count, and that would see primary 2 continuing even lower. It looks like, from my classic analysis, it looks like primary 2 is most likely over and that there was a leading expanding diagonal here for minor 1 and now probably a zigzag for minor 2. The normal depth for second wave corrections early on for all cryptocurrencies would be from 80 to 90% the length of the first wave it's correcting. So that gives us a normal expected range for this downward movement to find support 
from about 17.1328 to about 15.4621. That would be absolutely normal, typical behaviour for this market. Let's have a look at some classic analysis, which I prepared earlier. This is the entire price history of Avalanche on a weekly chart. Here's the beginning of my Elliott Wave count. This is under $5. It starts off with a good bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. Has the ability to form exponential growth. Evening doji star and a shooting star. Downward movement. Morning star candlestick pattern. Upward movement. Shooting star. Pullback. Bearish engulfing. But then a morning doji star. This is not a bearish candlestick pattern at this high. Here we've got a gravestone doji. I'll hammer pattern here after some pullback. We'll get some upward movement. Gravestone doji. Bearish engulfing candlestick pattern here. Big bear market. Bullish long lower wick here. And then a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern at this low. The last three completed weeks complete an evening doji star. So this is a bearish reversal pattern. Expect probably a little bit more downward movement. Overall volume declining as price rises. That's normal for a leading diagonal or the technical analysis equivalent pattern would be a rising wedge. Look out for support at 10.5. No signal at the weekly chart level for one balance volume. ADX says there's no clear trend. There was no bearish divergence between price and RSI at the high. RSI has just reached oversold at the low, back in neutral territory. Money flow index reached oversold at the low, no bullish divergence, that too is in neutral territory, as is stochastics. ATR declining as price falls, that's normal behaviour for cryptocurrencies and bear markets. At the daily chart level, we're zooming in now on this low. At this low, and just so you know, I'm looking at the closing prices to identify if there is divergence between price and indicators, but I'm drawing my trend lines across lows because it's more visually intuitive. There is double bullish divergence between price and RSI and double bullish divergence between price and money flow index at this low after both of those indicators reached oversold. So that's quite strongly bullish. Then we have a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern. It lacks support from volume. That's okay. These cryptocurrencies can be weak off their lows, which does make the lows really, really hard to identify. Some upward movement, a bearish engulfing pattern. No bullish pattern here. A bullish engulfing pattern here, a morning doji star here, now a gravestone doji. Another one here as part of this evening doji star. So a couple of gravestone dojis and an evening doji star. Now getting some downward movement. Support, I would look out for initially at 15 and below that at 10.5. Volume pushing price lower for Friday's session quite strongly. I'd expect probably a bit more downward movement there. Not too much though necessarily. We can see downward movement ending with really strong volume, a little bit of a relief rally, and then another low with weaker volume, so declining volume at the low here. Let's look out for possibly a same, same different setup before we can expect a low is in. I don't think it's in quite yet, but I would expect we might see 15 tested. That might be a little optimistic. Non-balance volume has no range, no new signal. The last signal was bearish, not particularly strong though. ADX indicates that the daily chart level after the prior upward trend, which didn't reach extreme, currently no clear trend. RSI neutral territory, no bullish divergence at the high, but money flow index showed, sorry, no bearish divergence between price and RSI, but price and money flow index does show bearish divergence. This is why I'm adding money flow index. It sometimes will show divergence when RSI does not, so it's a little bit more sensitive. It adds volume to the calculation, so it adds a little bit more depth. Back in neutral territory, stochastics entering oversold can get there for a little while longer Price can move a little bit lower. So this chart and the weekly chart offers some support to the Elliott Wave count that sees a sustainable low down here. And after this, I didn't put it on the uh, technical analysis chart, but I should. I should draw trend lines up here and along here. This looks like a rising wedge pattern. The breakout is down. I'd expect a further downward reaction after that. Just... Um, I've seen quite a few people suggest that this could be a bear flag pattern. Flag patterns are short-term continuation patterns lasting from a few days to a few weeks. This one's over eight weeks. That really is stretching that definition of a few. Now, 
it's not absolute, the definitions aren't absolute. A few can mean from three or four to maybe five or six. I think eight is by any definition stretching that. This would much better be considered a rising wedge. Still got a downward breakout, still expecting more downward movement. It's just the nomen nomenclature. Am I saying that right? The nomenclature, the, the jargon that you're using, I, I really like accuracy. So just so you know, I'm going to call that a rising wedge, not a bearish flag pattern. And uh, Yep, so I think these charts support the Elliott wave count. That's my conclusion for Avalanche. Here's my range I expect for support in probably another two or three weeks. And I might actually, I think in another one or two weeks, I think I'll be buying some more of these smaller coins, just a little bit here and there, um, a little bit of a nice range to hold for a few years. That's all from me. Thank you so much for your support, everyone on the YouTube channel, and especially thank you so much to all my membership at pureelliotwave.com. I appreciate every single one of you very much indeed.